Well, hello, and thank you for joining us again today for another daily devotional as we begin uh, another day being locked in. And uh, as you know, all, everything's shut down. All we have is drive-throughs. And so as we go through Scripture, we're looking for instances where someone was driving something. Uh, and so just think it'll be a fun look through Scripture to see God's faithfulness in these moments. And now we're going to take you to Exodus 14. Uh, Exodus 14 is a really, really powerful passage uh, that points us in the direction of Christ, uh, points us in the direction of the deliverance we have in Jesus from sin and death, and we can get there. Uh, but it's really important that we see God's faithfulness in this. It's interesting. Uh, God has uh, had the people observe a Passover meal. The uh, Passover has happened, uh, and so many people in, is in Egypt have passed away, the firstborn of everything. Israel is now retreating and running out of Egypt. Uh, I shouldn't say retreating. Uh, they're following the Lord's leadership out of Israel, and now they are surrounded by uh, the, the Red Sea. And, and now suddenly Pharaoh changes his mind, and they are chasing and pursuing the Israelites, the Egyptians are. So it says this in verse 10, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians coming after them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. So interesting. Sometimes we will not cry out to the Lord for help until we reach a point where we are terrified, until we are face to face with our enemy. And whether that enemy is Satan, whether that enemy is death, whether that enemy is sin and shame and guilt, all those kind of things, until we have a sickness, until we have something happen to us, uh, a lot of times we will not cry out to the Lord. And so here are the Israelites. They've been slaves for over 400 years. Now they're on the verge of freedom, and yet now they're crying out to the Lord because the Pharaoh and his chariots are pursuing them. It says, They said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Isn't this what we told you in Egypt? Leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And I think sometimes if we're not careful in life, we can look back and think that the past was better than the present. That we can think about how the past is, oh, it was so much better when we could do whatever we wanted. It was so much better when we had all the freedom that we had. It was so much better when we didn't have to be locked in with our families and, and almost come to the point of killing each other, those kind of things. And so we have this moment where it's like, oh, it would have been better. It was better. It was better. And we miss God doing something incredible among us. I love what one person had illustrated through uh, making a, a video or a statement uh, about a college student in two, 2030, in the year 2030, so 10 years from now. And there's a college kid, and, and it says this, in history class, we learned that COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 was really bad. What was it like? And so he's asking his parents, what was that like when you lived through that? And the parent says, well, everything was shut down in an attempt to kill the virus, but not everyone followed the quarantine order for 15 days. So it lasted longer than anyone expected. Many people died who shouldn't have. Grocery stores were out of everything because people were hoarding as much as they could. We were scared of economic failure for our country and of ourselves because we couldn't work. Don't you remember it? I mean, you were eight years old. And the college student looks back at the parents and says, All I remember was the school closing and being homeschooled. I remember doing scavenger hunts in our yard. I remember eating meals as a family for a change. I remember getting great sleep because I wasn't up late for homework or getting up early for school. I remember board games as a family. I remember watching our pastor on our laptop. Honestly, it was the happiest days of my childhood. I hope that you have a perspective that's happening right now, that you can see the good that God is doing through all this. In Exodus 14, after the Israelites say this to Moses and they're complaining and they're saying, why didn't you just let us die back there? Moses says this, but Moses said to the people, don't be afraid, stand firm and see the Lord's salvation that he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you must be quiet. It's incredible when we think about how the Lord has fought for us. The Lord has fought through us in so many ways and 
ways that we don't even know about, we may not know about until we get to the other side. And, and suddenly after we pass from this life, maybe we'll get exposed to all the ways that God had protected our life, that he persevered and uh, allowed us to persevere in situations that he was using for our good and his glory. Not only that, but we may get to see the people that we impacted by the way we lived through a time of struggle, through a time of, of suffering, through a time of challenge. And instead, people would see the goodness of God in us because of the way we handled during that time. I love what Romans 6 says. Romans 6 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope that you would know that the best way and the most uh, sufficient way that God has cared for us is in providing Jesus as our sacrifice, our hope for all eternity, and for a future where there will be no pain, no pandemics, no epidemics, no sickness, no death, no suffering. And we look forward to that day. But until we get there, let's not miss what God is doing in this very moment at this very day. I'm praying for you to have this perseverance, praying for you to have this foresight and vision to see what God is doing and to trust him when we don't see what he's doing. I love you. Praying for you. Thank you very much.